We're going to start by opening an existing hydraulic model. Browse to the location of pipes and junctions and click Open. Say yes to enable change tracking. This model is a continuation of Workshop 2 of importing basic model data. Um, we're going to save this. and name it Pumps and Tanks. Click Save. We'll have to modify a few items here. This will become a pump. This will become a tank. And these three will become pressure reducing valves. So go to Layout and select Pump. Place the cursor on top of J11 and click. Say yes to morph that node into a junction. We'll do the same. Grab a tank and place it on top of J12. Say yes to morph. Click Escape. Select J13, 14, and 15. Go to Tools, Morph, Batch Morph. We already have a selection and we want to convert those junctions into PRVs. So select OK. Now we have to make sure that these PRVs are labeled correctly and also oriented correctly. So we'll start by renaming them. This one is PRV1, PRV1. This is PRV3, which is correct, and PRV2. Now we have to make sure that PRV1, the downstream pipe is P6, so that's correct. PRV, we're going to reverse that PRV2, so that the downstream pipe is P8. And PRV3 has downstream pipe of P16. So that's all correct. An easy way to enter the information for those PRVs is through the flex tables. So we're going to find the PRV flex table. And this table already contains all the data that I want. Um, if I want to change the order of these columns to match the table, I can simply drag. Uh, if you don't see any of these columns, you can go to Edit and bring in the correct parameters. Let's go ahead and sort by label. And we're going to make sure that we have the data that's on the table. OK, review that your data is correct. Now close. Let's modify uh, the pump information. So we're going to component pump definitions to enter that pump curve. Create a new pump definition. Uh, set it to standard three points and enter the data. When you're done entering the pump curve, go to the efficiency tab. We'll input the data that we're given, and when you're done, click Close. Now we're going to assign that pump curve to our pump. So let's make sure we have the elevation that is 945, and look for Pump Definition, and select the curve that we just input. Now let's enter tank data. So double click on T1. Notice that this is an elevated tank because the elevation is 950 feet. The base of the tank is at 10. Input all the values. And 
and make sure the diameter is set to 50. Once you have all that data, you can go to Analysis, Scenarios, and rename your base scenario. We're going to name this Average Daily. Notice that the nodes in this model already had demands. So we're ready to compute. Go ahead and go to Analysis and Validate. And our problems were found, compute. And notice that we have a demand of 430 gallons per minute. 1,059 gallons per minute come from the reservoir. So 629 um, get stored in that tank T1. We'll point out a few things about this scenario. But the questions at the end of the workshop will be answered in the later part of this video. So just notice here that this scenario is for our daily demands. And we have water leaving the reservoir, going through the pump, meeting all the demands here. And notice that these two PRVs are allowing flow to these two junctions. This PRV is closed. Well, we'll go over that in a minute. Now for the second scenario, we will consider an additional demand of 1,500 gallons per minute at J5. And to do that, we go to Analysis, Alternatives, and Demand. Right-click on Base Demand and create a new child alternative. Rename it Average Daily Plus Industry. Double-click and find J5. I'm going to overwrite the demand to be 1,500 gallons per minute. Now we need to create a new scenario that contains that demand alternative. So go to Analysis Scenarios, create a new child scenario. Double click that scenario and make sure that the demand is average daily plus industry. Okay, now we're going to run the two scenarios as a batch. We're going to run them together. Okay, in order to show these results a little bit easier, I've added a few um, annotations. For the junctions, for example, I've added the hydraulic braid. I removed the labels for the pipes. And for the PRVs, I added two things. One was the hydraulic braid setting. So we can see that we're set 935, 940 feet. And also the head loss through that PRV. Now let's start with this run one. Um, we're asked the hydraulic grade line at J6 and at J4. Now notice here that we have a much higher hydraulic grade line here than here. And that's because this PRV is throttling. So it's reducing the pressure yet letting flow go through those junctions J4 and J5. Remember, these three PRVs are put in place to protect junctions J4 and J5. So we can see the reduction in hydraulic rate line. And remember, the reason that we're protecting those is because they are at lower elevation, therefore would be likely to have much higher pressures. For example, notice the elevation of J4 is 770 feet, whereas the elevation here is 890 feet. So we can see that PRV and P, uh, 3 and PRV2 are throttling to allow flow into these two nodes. And PRV1 is completely closed uh, because we have it set to 935. So the most it can do is close itself completely so it doesn't allow any flow to pass through this uh, valve. OK, another question was if uh, tank T1 was filling or draining. 
you can see the arrow shows the direction of flow so we can tell that it's filling that tank um, and we can also see the flow is 629 gallons per minute so basically we are pumping uh, 1059 gallons per minute to satisfy the demands and there's about 630 gallons per minute that go into storage so there aren't any problems in this system and if this is average flow conditions uh, the system is pretty adequate let's take a look at this pump we're going to right click and generate a pump curve so we get to see here that it's basically operating at the most efficient point and the flow that we had seen was uh, 1059 gallons per minute so pretty close to the best efficiency point all right now let's see what happens when we add that industry demand of 15 ga 1500 gallons per minute at j5 uh, we see that things have switched a little bit now we see flow coming both from the reservoir and pump and also from the tank if you're only running this for a little bit it's going to be okay but if you run this for a long time what's going to happen is that t1 is going to drain completely and your pump won't be able to handle all the demands in your system in fact uh, when we did the summary here, we could see that the demand in the system is uh, 1,880. Of those, 1,150 come from the reservoir and the remainder, 730, come from T1. So if you wanted to sustain this for a long time, your pump uh, and your reservoir would need to be able to provide those 730 gallons per minute. Now notice what is going on with the PRVs. Uh, we see the pressure up here is 1,000 feet, 1,046 here. And again, we want to protect these two nodes. So those three PRVs now are throttling. They're all um, partially open to let flow through those two nodes. But we can see head losses um, of 111 here, 56 feet, and 61 feet here. And finally, let's take a look at the pump curve. So notice that we're pumping a little bit more and it's still operating very close to its most efficient point. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.